So welcome, it's Monday, August 5th, 2024. It is 6.33. Welcome to the Devil <laughs> Development and Government Relations Committee. I'm the chair, Cocaine Givner. Um, here today on this committee are Councilors Ocasio, Councilor Anderson Burgos, Councilor Devine, and Councilor Sullivan. And um, yeah, so we're gonna, I would, Start by entertaining a motion. Motion to take up item number one and approve the minutes if everyone's okay with it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. <clears throat> and item two, got a motion for that. Motion to take up item number two. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So item two is a petition for Edwin Cologne of 23 Springdale Ave for a street vendor license to be located at the gas station on Berkshire and Main Streets. Um, our petitioner is here on Zoom, Mr. Edwin Cologne. Welcome. Thank you. So we have your application in front of us, and I'd just like to uh, open the floor for you to share with us um, what your intentions are. No, basically, I've been doing it for a few years. I just, it's going to be a year this month, end of this month, that I retire, and I bought a hot dog car. Uh, and I ran it before in the St. Patrick Parade. I did it at the fireworks and, and the city and stuff like that previous year because of the COVID, I had to shut it down. So I wanted to reopen it again on that spot on Main Street. <coughs> and <Bay. coughs> All right, thanks, Mr. Clone. So I, I see you're retiring um, from the post office somewhere we all have seen you many times. So congratulations on that. Um, you. Your application looks complete. It's been stamped. Um, are there any questions from anyone on this committee? Mm -hmm. uh, Councilor Sullivan? Not so far, to oh. make sure they swim by and have, you know, have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councilor Sullivan has a question. Yeah. Edward, when, when was the last time you communicated with the owner of that lot? Basically, I'm on a, the way I look at it, I'm on a sidewalk. You know, he hasn't come. I never spoke with him. I was going to be on the lot, but uh, the other guy was there, Mike. He used to do uh, steak, uh, steak sandwiches. He left because he said he was charging a lot to be inside a lot. So we basically on the sidewalk. I even went the other day before he cut the grass this weekend. I cut that little corner where the sidewalk is and everything. Try to keep it clean and all that. So. Uh, well, I'm not sure about uh, if we can approve something going on the sidewalk. Uh, but Maine. as far as the lot goes, the owner, when I went by the other day, his building has been completely vandalized. Windows are broken and trash all True. over the place. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. A, any insight there as to, you know, what's going on with them? Uh, yeah, no, like I say, I noticed the window, they smashed the window and stuff like that. I was on a little emergency out in Puerto Rico. I, I just came back and I noticed it. But like I say, if you look at it, the sidewalk, ain't nobody go through there. You only get traffic in there from the from the truck. The main street, the sidewalk is clean. Everybody walk through there. But on Bercher, the corner where I got the car is, is basically, it's no traffic, you know, foot traffic in that spot. Yeah. Um, you have a question? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Ocasio? Uh, my, con my concern, him being right at the, right at the corner of that <laughs> My concern of, of him being right at the corner of that street, um, when cars turn in, mm -hmm. it's like a little sharp turn. So, I mean, if he's right in the, on, the, on the street part, I mean, anybody that takes that turn and don't know that, that he's there, uh, mm -hmm. he can get hurt. So, Edwin, do you have something? Do you have something that you can put there in the corner so people can visually see that some that you right there at the corner, so you won't get hit when you no, know. No, I got a big, I got a, I got a ten feet flat. I can say hot dogs. I'm away. The other day, I, it was a truck. They went in there and stuff like that. And I'm far away from the main street. So when they, even the truck, you no, know, the car when the truck go in there, stuff like that that they down low down on the street so far they haven't broken you know there's any issues yet so i'm away from the main street when they do the turn okay that was um, my concern i have a question um for attorney bassinet if you're available yeah 
Yeah, yeah, he is. Welcome, Attorney Bissonette. Thank you. Um, so yeah. my question is just, um, is this something that can be approved since we don't have, it doesn't sound like there's permission from the owner of the gas station, but it sounds like um, Mr. Cologne will be on the, you know, the public sidewalk. So um, is that something we can um, give a permit for? I believe that has to go for the use of public roads and sidewalks has to be approved by the DPW for a permit. Hmm. Yeah. And that's what this right. would be. This would essentially, uh, hi Edwin, Check again? Th that yeah. would uh, essentially, Hello. that would essentially be um, right on the sidewalk if I understand correctly. So I would, I would just out of an abundance of caution run this by DPW and, uh, and see if they're okay with it. As far as the permit itself, the council has the authority to grant that, but I'm not certain about the uh, sidewalk use. Thank you, Attorney Bissonette. I'd just like to recognize that Councilor Bartley is in the chambers. Welcome. Councilor Devine? Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, everything seems to be in place except yeah. for maybe um, the sidewalk issue. So I'm wondering if we can pass this um, tonight uh, pending DPW approval, which um, Jeffrey might be able to get tomorrow before our meeting. Is that a possibility? Councilor Bissonette, maybe you can. As, as long as the director is willing to sign off uh, with, uh, with his approval. Okay. If it's pending approval, that I, would be what that means, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think the board actually has to vote on I believe that the director is authorized. I'll, I'll check with Carl on it to make sure we're on the same page, but I believe that's how it works. Right. Okay. Um, Councillor Bartley. Yeah, just a comment to the chair. Yes, please. Uh, so, if, if, and, and you know, we we all know Mr. Cologne. He's mm -hmm. a great guy. Um, just he wants to have the, he wants to do what? I'm sorry, I got here late. I apologize. So he wants to do what at the? It's a hot dog and burger stand. Oh, that's great. And mm -hmm. and right on on the corner, is that yes. what he's he's seeking? Mm -hmm. Okay. So and the only reason I'm just speaking up on this, which you know clearly I'd, I want to support it, is that that particular site is going to go under a, a major transformation, I believe, and uh, at some point starting possibly this year, but likely next year. So there won't be a gas station there anymore, right? And there's going to be a lot of construction going on in that location. So I'm happy to support them, right? But I just want to point out that likelihood for for his edification for a change so in the future I, I, I mean i just i don't think there's anything wrong with the petition and we like to support people that are good especially mr coloni the legend so um but i i just want to make sure that he's yeah. aware and that you're aware and i just in terms of uh if i give my two cents and i mean committee i'm sure the committee will make the right vote but i i generally don't like to jump the gun on on other boards if since we're the, the DGR has set out a kind of fairly uh, consistent set of meetings going forward. I don't know when the Public Works Board is meeting. Right. I, I, I'm not one to generally support um, votes in, in, in anticipation because okay. I, I don't know what they're going to say. And so I would prefer, if that's the case, mm -hmm. as Attorney Bissonnet has said, I prefer to have, leave it here. But that's that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brightly. Appreciate that. Um, Councillor... Anderson Burgos. Hey Eddie, how are you doing, my friend? Good. Good. Let me let me ask. Do, do you have a, a second location in mind at all, just in case? Well, the honestly, the other one it was going to be. Uh, it was a guy there about a few years ago. He he did it right uh, on the on the street, right in front of the Springdale Park. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. For you know, for for a year or two, you know, stuff like that. Sometimes the traffic in there is, is I'm too close to the main street, right? You know, you know and that's the only thing I'm very on that corner. People going into the recycle center and stuff like that. You know, the traffic in there, people that that, 
they drive the truck. In the morning, they don't have no place to eat around there, stuff like that. So I thought it was more comfortable in that corner. But, but if they're going to do the major construction and stuff like that, then I will move later on in the future by Springdale Park. Yeah, I was going to suggest Springdale Park where there there's a little miniature parking spot, uh, parking lot, like somewhere in there. Yeah. Where cars can pull over easily and safely. It's just yeah. an option. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, back in the days before when I did the permit, they they not allow me to be inside the park. Uh, gotcha. I had to be out be outside. Okay. I'm also noticing here. Um, thank you, Councillor Anderson Burgos. I'm also noticing here that on the uh, the mobile food unit permit holder base of operations, it says Nuestras Raices. Um, do you store it there, or do you sometimes use it in front of Nuestras Raices too? We just we just use it, you know, to do the clean up and prepare okay. some stuff in there, you know. Uh, but other than that, it, the, the the car I park it, you know, in my house, you know, because okay. I have to, you know, water down and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you, um, Councillor Devine. You had a question. Yeah, I did too, um, Attorney Bissonette. Um, you indicated you were going to speak to Carl tomorrow. Um, do you need to have a board meeting to answer that question? I believe so. I'm sorry. There are things that the director uh, has been authorized to do by the board, and uh, permits and permit appeals are one of those topics, I believe. Great. Thank you. And um, Edwin, just a quick question. Um, what will you be doing in the wintertime? And no, in the wintertime, then I have to shut it down because I okay. got another job. I work for a cancer agent. I'm okay. the driver for them, too. Okay, right. so during construction or anything like that, you'll be able to move your cart? Down by Springdale Park, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, thank you. Do you have something on? Um, Check, check. Thanks, Aaron Vega. Uh, Aaron Vega, Director of Office of Plan Economic Development. Uh, so our, our permits aren't quite straightforward when it comes to food truck, but we're on the right path. So yes, they come to you for the use and allowed. The, they, he has to have a location to clean and prep his food, so they use Nestle Racist, so that's great. The blocking, the right of um, the sidewalk, which is the right of way, is just a, a, a permit, and I don't think it goes to the board. We get them, we get them all the time for mm -hmm. different people. Yep. Jonathan Moquin's the main contact there at the DPW, um, and they turn them around really fast. So we do it for open air vendors. We do it, so they have to go whenever everyone's blocking the sidewalk for anything. They have to get the um, the permit from the DPW. Okay, so, so he'll as, just need as to. As Councilor Barley mentioned, there will be construction there, but probably beginning in the spring next year for the for at that area. So. Okay, thank you very much. That's all very helpful. So it sounds like we'll need to um, table this for one meeting so you can get a I make you know. a motion that we pass this tonight pending um, Carl's approval. Second. That uh, Attorney Bissonette said will happen tomorrow. Okay, if that's the will of the body, I, I agree. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so this will be um, sent to city council for a vote pending and pending a, the permit approval for from the DPW. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colon. Okay, so can I set up tomorrow? No. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not. You'll have to get Wednesday. the permit from DPW first. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right. Item okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Motion open a public hearing for number three. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So item three is public hearing for a special, I'm sorry, yeah, for a special permit application in Open Square Realty at 2 Open Square Way to redevelop the mill building into a multifamily 84 apartment dwelling. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So it looks like. Are you yep. here for that, yep. Eric? Yep. Oh, great. Yep. Why don't you tell us all about it? So, yeah, so we're here. Uh, this is a procedural move. Obviously, I want to thank the City Council again for the approval of the tie agreement for this. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have. Uh, been here with that before uh, at that same time. Uh, so this is a city council special permit to allow residential units to be built in IG, the industrial zone. Um, and so there are representatives from Open Square here. I think the architect is also online as well. So they're more than happy to answer questions, but this is basically a, a procedural part where city council special permit to allow residential use in the industrial zone. I will say that they are quite along in their plans. They've been working with our planning department uh, for, their site, for their site plan review. Um, they've been invited uh, into the August application for the HDIP, that's the Housing Development Incentive Program. Uh, so this is also really great news for us because that's going to be the only subsidy uh, along with our tie agreement. So they are not using low income tax credit. This will be a market rate development uh, at Open Square taking in, in one of the entire buildings, if you will. If you, if you all know Open Square, it's like a V or an E, sorry, from upside down. So an entire part of the, like one fifth of the property will be turned into residential market rate. Um, and so Obviously, it's exciting, and you know we dovetail it with the Cuban, we dovetail it with wind development, uh, and we know that residential at Open Square has been a long time coming. So the new owners have been very proactive in getting this done. Uh, so again, there's owners here tonight. If you want to talk to them, I know they weren't here when we got the tie agreement passed, but they were very thankful. Uh, and again, I think their architect might be online as well. So if there's any questions, we're here to answer them. But um, again, the project does go through site plan review because it is a uh, change of use. Uh, so they've already been talking to us, uh, and we already have seen preliminary plans. So if there's any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you, Aaron. Do we have questions from the committee? No. Um, Councilor Sullivan? Yeah, thanks. Um, Aaron, for either you, you or anyone else, I, I've heard you mention already two or three times uh, market rate yep. units. But in the uh, plan here, I see primarily as market rate units. So this always scares me a little bit. I can't really hear you. He said primarily market rate. Well, I think the main thing is that this allows the, the without getting a low income tax credit subsidy, it allows the owner to set the rates. So they're not going to be, there's no, they're not beholden for a seven year, uh, you know, restriction on income. So they can, if they decide to rent them for $800 a unit, they'll rent them for $800 a unit. If they want to sell them, rent them for $1,800 a unit, they can, so there's no restriction on that. So um, they can sort of play, and we've been sort of really trying to push projects to be at least 60% medium income and above. Um, this allows them to go 60 to, I think, 120% medium income with the HDIP. Um, so. They, they are allowed to go a little bit, bef well, 80%, 60%, but again, given, given the ratio right now, that's usually between, uh, you know, 80% medium income uh, and what's quote unquote market rate for Hoyle, is about a $300 difference. So that is changing, obviously, as, market, as the market changes and housing uh, stock is becoming, you know, the supply and demand situation, but the HDIP kind of has the restrictions within it. So, but again, it's not the low income tax credit. And obviously, this would obviously be open to a vouchers program. We can't restrict voucher programs, but again, the voucher program would allow an individual, if they're allocated a thousand dollars and the rent's fifteen hundred, the individual would have to pay that portion of the rent themselves. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? No. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. So, this has been has come up a few times for the same building. So I feel like a lot, we've all heard quite a bit about this project. So I don't think anyone here is new to it. Um, so anybody in the audience? Since the, yeah, sorry. So since this is a um, public hearing, does anyone from the public have any questions or comments about this project? Or would the people on the project like to say anything? <laughs> Hi, Yedidia Blaher. I can answer any questions. Mm -hmm. I'm in charge of the development of the Open Square site, mm -hmm. and I've been hiring the consultant, the engineers, architects, and everybody to do the project. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of knowledge in the plans and what we're planning to do. So I'm here to answer any questions on the developments. Um, I can imagine the public would like to know what you think the timeline would be f for this project. We hope for sure we're waiting for the city council uh, permit and once we're done with that, we still got to go through the planning board mm -hmm. and then for sure the building department approval, which we are planning to do it simultaneously. We hope to have our approvals, I would say within the next, uh, I would say three to five months or everything goes smoothly 
and we have the proper consultants in terms of architect, engineer, civil to answer any questions, uh, make sure the process moves along quickly. And then we hope it's going to be a winter construction project. That's okay. our plan for now. And hopefully construction will take around 10 to 12 months. Hopefully by the next summer, like towards, I would say, end of the summer, we'll be able to get our CLO and start wow. getting applications for tenants. For all 84 units? Again, I'm for sure it's not going to go as quick. You know, I've, I'm sure we'll won't have. I, we'll, we'll be excited to have move-ins all at one day and fill up 84 <laughs> units at once. But uh, I don't think that will happen for a free market uh, project. Yeah. But uh, hopefully, it will move nicely. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions? No questions. I don't see anyone online. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, public hearing is closed. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess I would entertain a motion to approve the special permit application. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So this will go to the full city council for a vote um, tomorrow. And I, yeah, I wish you the best. Yeah. Thank you. Luck. It's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to open a public hearing for item number four. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Item four is a public hearing for a special permit application of Solomar Realty, LLC, care of Peter Martins for a special permit for a proposed coffee shop drive through restaurant at South Street Plaza, a portion of 209 South Street. Um, this has been continued a few times. Um, Nine. <laughs> since Nine. <laughs> since uh, July of last year, but it's a big project. Um, is someone here... A, Regarding this public hearing, anybody? I don't see is someone online. Um, Jeffrey, do you have any insight? You have a, you have a letter in your yeah, packet. Right okay. Oh, thank you. I feel like they've been here so many times. <laughs> Great. Ah, got it. Here, and I thought we were smooth sailing. All right, so I will, we'll, since there's no one from the public. Um, yeah, there's no hand up. That's my hand on the thing. Since there's no one from the public, I'll just read the letter from, from these parties, from Levesque Associates to continue this. Dear Councilor Governor and committee members, on behalf of the applicant Solomon Realty, LLC, care of Mr. Peter Martins, our Levesque Associates, Inc., is requesting the City of Holyoke City Council Development and Government Relations Committee continue the review of the above reference application schedule for Monday the 5th, today, to a date certain in late August or early September. The DGR committee had originally continued this item from June 6th um, to August 5th in order to allow for the planning board time to review and vote on the major site plan review application for the above reference project. Review by the City of Holyoke Planning Board is still pending and has been continued to their August 27th meeting. Uh, kindly confirm receipt. All right, so we can continue this to... <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like we can do Wednesday, September 4th. Does that work for everyone here? September 4th? Yes. Madam. Um, yes, Jeffrey? Uh, so the meeting that would be September 3rd got moved to September 4th, the city council <laughs> meeting. So oh, right. okay. Um, so we can't do that. Well, the next one I can Perhaps we could have wait. open is the 30th. Till we hear from the planning board. Review by the city planning board is still pending yeah. and has been continued to their August 27th. But I'm pretty 24th. sure we, when somebody's table, we have to have an, a next date. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about Monday the 30th of September? That's fine. It works? Okay. See. That is open. That's open? Monday the 30th yes. of September? Okay, winner. Continue to the 30th. All right, I'll entertain a motion. 
I mean, yeah, I'll entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to Monday, September 30th. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okie dokie. So, looks like we're moving right along. Motion to take up item number five. Is that okay. table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just, I just lost it. I just lost my number five. Oh, there it is. So, item number five, um, by, by Councillor Bartley, ordered that the City Council approve an amendment to a home rule petition for the purpose of expanding the Center City liquor license area. That was tabled from June 20th. Um, Councillor Bartley is present. Would you like to speak to this? Okay. Um. So uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> thanks to Councilor Bradley. We've been working on this one for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we came before you uh, earlier this year uh, for a first pass an amendment That's to expand the Center City Liquor License Program down uh, the full length of High Street. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, thankfully it was brought up by, Bar by Councilor Bartley and others that we should really look at some other areas because interestingly enough, the area, the line stopped at the the alleyway to Main Street, so we weren't able to use this program for any of the uh, area around Cabot and Main Street, but there's some potential development there. Um, mm -hmm. So this is just an additional amendment to include uh, basically that block of, uh, of, of Main Street, uh, capturing some of those uh, potential storefronts in that area. Uh, again, potential potential for development. Um, again, this is a program that's been in the city for a while. It hasn't, you know, hasn't uh, sparked as much as we'd like to. But we have the Colombian restaurant uh, has one of these liquor licenses, as does Fame, and both those restaurants are doing very well. Um, and so this is there's been a lot of interest uh, from uh, Camellias uh, down the street. Uh, and uh, again, she would not be in the current zone, so she would be in this amended zone. Um, so that's something that right now she's doing one day liquor licenses. Um, and again, just so people know, this is a, a program where the city intent basically owns these liquor licenses, if you will. So someone applies for them, they get approval from the redevelopment authority first, and then they go through the same process through the ABCC that anyone would. The key with this program is that the liquor license is only $10,000, full liquor license, um, and the HRA actually pays the first year of renewal, so it only costs the applicant $9,000. If the restaurant closes or even moves, the license comes back to the city. Hmm. So this, this is not a transferable license like other liquor licenses that are owned by the properties. Like um, so um, again, we're hopeful that uh, this program, again, even expanding a little bit, we'll do some more press around it and hopefully try to get some more interest. Um, again, capturing some of the locations uh, that are uh, potentially up for sale now, potentially being developed hopefully in the next year or two. So just one more tool in the toolbox. Yeah, um, and again, thanks to the council and particularly Council Bartley for helping us look at this and expand it out. Oh yeah, okay, one other good point about this uh, program is that this is uh, not just for bars, this is a uh, restaurant intended, mm -hmm. uh, so they have to at least uh, bring food to the table. So this is, uh, you, you are allowed at Fame to order from the, from the counter, uh, but then the food does need to be brought to you. So uh, whenever the applicant comes, that's really what the HRA is approving, is the, is the um, business model, if you will, to ensure there's actually going to be table service. Um, we recognize that restaurants are struggling, and so the in innovative ideas like having an order place, but the food being brought out to you, that's allowable through this. So it really is focusing on uh, restaurants. These are not for um, off-site premises liquor, meaning there's no liquor stores that can be used this, and it can't be just a straight bar. Nice. Good point. All right, thanks for the explanation. And we've looked at this a couple of times too, so seeing the added um, zones is nice. Um, and you mentioned Main Street, and it also was, so there's a section of Main Street I'm looking at, and also a section to the end of High Street yeah, that High continues. Street. Yep. All right, I'm happy to see you this. Are there any questions? Um, um, Aaron, the Divine? fees, does that go to the city? The, the, yep, the, the, yeah, the, the fees, the, um, yep, the fees go to, to the city, and then of course they're, they're, they have to renew this liquor license like any other liquor license. Okay. So a year, there's a yearly renewal that goes great. right to the, yep, exactly. Thank you, it's a yep. great idea, yep. yeah. mm -hmm. great idea. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the committee? Nope. Motion to approve the amendment to the whole Second. Rule Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, right. All right. Unanimous. Thanks. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you. Councillor Bartley. Have a good meeting tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this shouldn't be so funny. <laughs> so. <laughs> Motion to take up item number six. Second. All in Second. favor? Aye. All right. 
Um, item six is a downtown parking study final report that was tabled from June. Um, are you here for that? Welcome. Would you like to come in and have a seat and a microphone? So where's that at? Six. And what's your name again? I'm sorry. Oh, this is you. Okay. I'm just asking her. As a... It, the green light. Oh, there we go. And I just like to recognize that. Um, President Murphy Romboletti is online, along with our mayor, Josh Garcia. All right. so, good evening. Uh, my name is Natalie Press. Um, I'm a project manager at Bowman who worked on the Holyoke Downtown Parking Study. Um, and joining me tonight remotely is my colleague, Dan Lamery, who worked on this study to help with some of the Q&A. Um, so Dan. if he can be promoted to speak if needed uh, towards the end, that would be great. Uh, so I'm going to run through um, some of our uh, key findings from the parking plan and an overview of how we conducted the study, um, starting with the goals and objectives, uh, the study process, key findings, our draft action plan, and then, like I said, there'll be time for questions at the end. Uh, and so, you know, the first question I want to answer is why did we look at parking in downtown Holyoke? Um, and so really the... Um, one of the main ways to establish a thriving business district is to have a well-functioning parking system, making sure there's not too much parking, uh, but also making sure that there's enough parking for customers who are seeking to um, frequent local businesses. Um, and then also it's important to balance parking supply with demand to help create an efficient system. Um, and then we also want to look at how to create safe and accessible connections between key destinations so that people feel comfortable getting out of their car, walking a few blocks if needed, uh, and then reach their final destination. Uh, and so we started off this study by defining the study area. And so you can see here um, any segment in the map on the right that has a color on it is where we did a parking inventory. And then the part shaded in a darker gray is where we did parking utilization counts. Um, and so in the study area, you can see the majority is on-street parking, followed by off-street parking, that's about one-third of the area, and then um, accessible spaces. And overall, it's almost 4,000 spaces in this area of downtown Holyoke. Uh, and so our study process was comprised of three parts. First, we created the inventory, that, which resulted in a digital map. That's what I showed you on the previous slide. Uh, then we did parking utilization counts, which involves counting the number of parked cars throughout the day to understand trends in terms of where uh, the parking is most utilized and at what times of day. Uh, and then we did a turnover study in a more specific area to understand how long vehicles were parked in specific locations. Uh, and so overall, our key finding from this study was that parking is very underutilized in this downtown area. Um, the average utilization rate over the course of the day was only 34%. And this is compared to um, what we consider our target utilization rate or ideal rate of 85%. And that 85% um, represents what we mean when we say an efficient parking system where there is um, availability for people to find parking who need it, but parking is also full enough that there is um, you know, people on the street, people frequenting local businesses, uh, and really that active downtown environment. And so 85% is really that, that magic number. And you can see here um, the ch in the chart on the bottom right that over the course of the day, it's just very low, um, even at the peak utilization um, at 11 a.m., uh, kind of corresponding with your lunchtime business. Um, and so what we find here is that parking is consistently available. You know, while it might be utilized, highly utilized in some specific blocks and neighborhoods, there's always parking available somewhere. And so that starts us thinking about, well, how do we just shift where people are looking for parking or make them feel comfortable parking uh, somewhere else, not right in front of their main destination? Um, and so then, like I said, we did a turnover analysis to support our parking utilization findings um, or kind of further understand what they mean. 
And so we did this um, turnover study uh, on High Street and Maple Street, and we saw that on average in a four-hour period, um, during the peak time of day, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., the average turnover rate was only 1.04, which essentially one. So basically there was one car parked in each space on average. So that's really showing us that people are using this parking for longer term vehicle storage. There's not that turnover that you want to support downtown businesses. Um, and so that's really insightful that the people aren't really following um, time limits in this downtown area. Um, and then even where there was a slightly higher, higher turnover rate um, on High Street between Oliver and Hamden Street, that was only two, two cars on average in that four hour period. Um, and so another key finding we saw is that, um, you know, downtown Holyoke has a strong foundation for a more um, accessible parking and walking environment. So you can see here on this map, uh, within a five minute walk of the Children's Museum, there are several um, garages and then just beyond that are several off, off street parking lots. And so again, there is an ample supply of public parking within this general area. It's just a question of how to make people feel safe and comfortable using it in terms of um, physical safety and infrastructure, but then also um, things like wayfinding and like understanding where that parking is and how they can find it, not only from their cars to the parking spaces, but once you park, being able to understand how to walk back to where you're trying to get to. Um, so there really is a strong foundation here for creating that type of environment. Um, and so this slide is a list of some of the key issues that I've been talking about and how they relate to key opportunities in Holyoke, um, such as, like I was just talking about, limited wayfinding, lack of appealing pedestrian connections, and how that relates to the potential here for a walkable commercial district. Um, there's also other um, issues such as the outdated parking meter technology and lack of enforcement, and how that relates to the need for a streamlined parking management system that I'll talk about um, in a few slides when I get to the, the key actions. Um, so now I am going to delve into our parking action plan. Uh, and the discrete actions that we recommend are um, categorized by strategy. And so there are three overarching strategies. The first one is about implementing a streamlined, modern, adaptable, and accessible parking system. Uh, so looking at meter technology, parking enforcement bodies, um, things like that. The second one is about updating city, po city policies and programs to support an efficient parking district. And then the third one is about how to enhance the downtown street streetscape to improve the overall business environment. Um, so again, like key infrastructure improvements. Uh, and each action is categorized with um, different icons, such as cost, and we look at this low, medium, high scale, uh, we have categories for infrastructure and then policy and programs. Uh, note the type of cost, whether it's capital or operating. And then overall provide um, a measure of the level of effort in terms of how much uh, coordination is needed uh, and what type of time frame you're looking at. And so this is just to provide a sense of which actions are those short, quick wins um, that can start to build momentum for a project, and then which ones are longer term investments in terms of time and resources. Uh, so before I get into the specific actions to move forward with, uh, these next two slides just show how some of these strategies can be applied um, at a real location in the city. Uh, and so first example is Suffolk Street near High Street. Um, and so starting on the left here, you can see strategy two, um, consider alternate uses for underutilized parking. So thinking about what, how else could this space be used? Could it be um, a bike lane, could it be outdoor dining? Uh, there's a lot of different uses for the curb, and so an underutilized parking supply provides the opportunity to repurpose some of that space. Uh, then in the middle here with updated meter technology, um, you can see here's an example of one of the meters in Holyoke, but there's different kinds, they're in varying conditions, and so really streamlining the meters that exist will help people feel comfortable and know what to anticipate when they come here uh, to park downtown. And then on the right, improve um, accessibility and lighting. So looking at locations of the sidewalk that might have cracking or uneven surfaces and how to improve them uh, so that they're accessible for all types of people. And then look at lighting improvements so that people feel comfortable not only during the day, but um, at night as well. And then our second example is High Street and John Street. 
Um, and so again, starting on the left, there's um, ensure consistent enforcement of parking regulations. Uh, so if you know parking is signed one or two hours, but it's never enforced, people are likely going to just start parking longer. Um, and then that's taking up valuable space that could be used for different customers to be able to access businesses. Um, in the middle here, using flex post to deter illegal parking and improve pedestrian visibility at crosswalks. Um, so if people are parking right up against a crosswalk, that's blocking uh, the visibility for a pedestrian who's about to enter the crosswalk. So this is about safety and looking at those physical improvements. Um, and then lastly, um, a strategy could be implementing overnight resident parking. So that could still be in areas that has time restrictions during the day, but enables residents to park their car there overnight and not have to uh, worry about time restrictions and moving their car somewhere else. So now I'm going to get into the several key next steps that we see for fiscal year 2025 and moving forward uh, with this action plan and implementing some of the recommendations uh, to provide a starting point for creating this efficient parking system. Uh, so the first one is to develop an RFP to select a vendor to provide consistent parking meter technology across downtown Holyoke. Um, and so you can see here on the bottom right, there's some images of different types of meters in Holyoke today. Um, so again, like I was saying, it's really important for people to kind of know what to anticipate when they come and make it easy for them to park. And if they have to pay, make it easy to understand how to pay and what methods are acceptable and how much it costs to, pay, to park for a certain amount of time. And so having a streamlined system can really help with that um, and also help generate revenue back for the city. Um, and so in order to determine which vendor is best suited for the city, um, we recommend that you develop an RFP uh, to put out what type of requirements you're looking for and then select the appropriate vendor. And along with that, um, we have action 1.3B, which is to designate a body to oversee parking payment and enforcement system. Um, so again, like I was saying, if, if the parking regulations aren't enforced, then people are likely going to abuse them and they won't be achieving their intended goal. Um, and so this recommendation would be about designating which type of body is best suited to enforce a parking management system here. Um, that could be a specific city department <coughs> designated to oversee parking. That could be an independent parking authority. Um, that could also be um, a separate vendor that's selected based on the previous uh, action. And so there are different options here for this, uh, but really it's about someone having ownership of this parking management system. Um, and then along with that, just to talk through some of the graphics here on this slide. Um, in this parking management system, we would also recommend consolidating the parking regulations to make it easier to follow and therefore easier for people to um, abide by. And so you can see here, there's several recommendations, several regulations ranging from 15 minutes to three hours, and those could be consolidated to provide you know, one time frame for short term, one time frame for long term, and then maybe in both scenarios, 15 minutes is free to support pick up drop off, loading, um, Uber drop offs, things like that. And uh, here is a sampling of some options for um, parking vendors. These are outlined in a, um, one of the appendices to the final report. Um, so different vendors as well as um, parking rates from case studies conducted to show what um, comparable locations are doing in terms of how much parking is priced per hour. Um, again, thinking about allowing the first 15 minutes, of tr uh, 15 minutes of parking for free to support that really quick run in, run out type of um, activity or pick up, drop off. Um, and then also looking at making underutilized off street lots and garages either free or lower priced to incentivize their use and leave the on street parking um, higher priced. Uh, and then last on the right here, um, looking at employee per parking permit programs so that it's clear where employees can park and uh, making that not directly in front of a store where you ideally want your customers to be parking and not employees who might be there for long portions of the day. Uh, so moving on, but uh, along with all of these strategies um, is also enforcement. And so um, ensuring consistent enforcement of parking regulations 
And this is kind of a multi-step process where we looked at the existing enforcement area, which is in dark blue on this map. Uh, and so making sure that enforcement is solid there would be a first step, but then action 1.5 is looking at expanding this area um, once the parking management system gets up and running. And so if you expand that area to cover some of the more highly utilized spaces in this medium blue area, that can help generate more revenue uh, for the city by pricing those spaces and enforcing it. So that was all under the umbrella of strategy one, which I think is the kind of the meat of getting a parking management system up and running. Um, but along with that are strategies that look at the policies and programs. And so the one we want to highlight here is action 2.1, amend the zoning code to further reduce or eliminate parking minimums and implement parking maximums. Um, so what's well is illustrated in this graphic here on the right is that if every land use has a parking minimum, you usually end up with an overbuilt supply of parking where each individual land use provides so much parking that there's all of this underutilized space. Um, so one strategy can be looking at implementing parking maximums to define the maximum am amount of parking that's allowed. Um, and then also looking at opportunities for shared parking through uses with differing peak times of day. So an office typically has employees, you know, nine to five. And then if it's shared, that, if that parking is shared with a restaurant, op that opens at five, it's a really complementary use of space. And so um, space that used to be parking that's now shared can be repurposed for new development or public spaces. Um, and again, contributing to that vibrant downtown environment. Um, and then the last strategy I'm highlighting tonight um, is enhancing the downtown streetscape through actions such as improving sidewalks, crosswalks, and lighting between public parking and downtown destinations and then improving wayfinding around major parking generators. Um, and so both of these help support that park and walk environment that I was talking about, making sure that the physical infrastructure is in place so that people feel safe and comfortable, um, and then also just generally know how to find parking and how to get around downtown um, from a pedestrian vantage point. Um, and so those are the, the key next steps that we see as part of this parking study um, in terms of moving it forward. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have tonight. Thank you for that. Um, I just want to recognize, too, that Jordan Hart is with us from the chamber. Um, did, we, did you want to add anything to this presentation, Jordan? No, that was a pretty good synopsis <laughs> of the work that we've been working on. So thank you, Natalie, for <laughs> capturing that. Um, do we have yeah, um, yeah. questions, uh, Councilor like, Bartley? Yeah, Jordan's here because J Jordan chaired the committee. I realized oh. that, yeah. Oh, okay, so <laughs> and, and she did a you know, great job. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's going to be more steps going forward. And I, I think the summary was really good. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of lays out there's, we all know there's problems, there's been problems. I, I, I would like to point out some of the things that have been turning around lately. I mean, certainly we had, I mentioned at a prior meeting, we had somebody took their own initiative at DPW and mm. fixed all the meter heads because mm. he had scores of meters that were just sitting there in boxes at DPW. Nice. And, and now, <laughs> and, and I just saw him, I, and I, I'm loath to mention his name, but he, he, was, he was out, you know, enforcing last week. And so we were, we were laughing about it. So he just <laughs> took his own initiative. So one, I think, having that committee or having somebody kind of oversee it take ownership of this thing it's not it's too much for the mayor's office to be dealing with it, it, you can't the mayor has to do so many things it's got to be somebody and and then one of the things i i, I just want to point out it we've got so many attractions here but look at the suffolk look at the um the mayor topier deck mm. i mean why do we have to have all the police cars in there why do we have to have all the police cars underneath at, uh, at Pru? Mm -hmm. Why? Well, th there's gotta be some flexibility there mm -hmm. in terms of uh, police cars can be so far, but I mean, all those spaces, I mean, that courthouse, uh, Madam Chair, it's a busy place. Yeah, it is. And yeah. it's, I don't think the business is gonna slow down anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And people, would utilize the parking at, at the Suffolk Street. If they had to, right. Yeah, they, they, that, it's much more convenient too. Mm -hmm. And you park underneath, but are the gates working? Usually not. Yeah. 
So th those are just some of the, there's some, there's some upside to it, there's some downside. Uh, I, I think though this is a good place to really think about how we want to move forward. No, and, I agree. And, um, and there's a lot of us that, that want to help. And one last thing, uh, all the, because we talked about the committee, all the new housing uh, coming along o over on Appleton, we approved some grants over there. And, right. And and uh, we heard about some new, uh, new uh, other new housing opportunities. Well, yeah. there's some big projects going on down High Street too. Like, there's definitely going to be more traffic in need in need of more parking. Yeah. In, yeah, need of more parking. So that's so we we should, you know, there should be a committee with, you know, somebody like, you know, Carmen should be. I mean, Carmen knows what the heck's going on. Mm -hmm. Down. I mean, Jenny knows what's going on over here. I mean, you, you know what I mean? You just have to have some people that are kind of in tune with it. And then yeah. And then. Um, come back to us on a regular basis, tell us what's going on, and then we can all stay in the loop. I agree, that's thank it. you, Counselor. And I just wanted to add, like, um, that's something that was brought up, looking at the space we have and how it's being utilized and trying to use it better. And that's one way to do it is if you, you know, don't allow a use for certain things that encourages people to park in the areas where they should so that the businesses get more business and people are parking in places where they have to move around the city a little, I think is important. Um, Jordan? Thank you, Chair. I do just want to touch base that, to your point, that there is a lot of movement happening with the Mass DOT, Maple and High Street um, redevelopment, as well as the wayfinding study that just um, got finalized. So there a lot, this kind of comes at a great time where there's a lot of projects going in, plus um, I know that the mayor has expressed interest in um, rehabbing the Peru parking garage. So I think making, um, Making folks feel safe while they're parking is definitely key because that's why folks want to park as close to proximity to the places of work as um, or the, wherever they're going as possible. Me personally, being an employee who works on High Street every day, parking has been really challenging. And I do think at what the committee committee unanimous unan I can't talk unanimously feels is that the DPW should not be taking the ownership of the parking. Um, within the city. They're already strapped in and we should not be having two DPW workers or an auxiliary officer taking on the role of the parking authority. So that was one key takeaway that all of us and um, Councillor Bartley, you can speak because you were part of the committee, but um, it's just too much of a burden for our public works department and seeing the money that, um, especially Holyoke Health Center, who is our largest downtown employer, puts in, they pay for all of their employees to have parking passes within the garage. So using that money to help with the repairs and to help um, put on a parking authority. Because I know at one point we did have a contract with, um, I think their name was actually Park Authority. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to sound The parking authority. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to add that, that yeah. with the current projects and um, that we really feel that the DPW should not be the ones who are held responsible and liable for the parking in the city. Yeah. I, thank you, Jordan. I agree 100% with that. And I think, um, like like was mentioned, none of this matters if there's no parking enforcement. I mean, we see the same thing with keeping our streets clean. If, if we threaten to tow cars but never do it, then no one ever moves their car when the streets are getting swept, you know. So we have, we definitely have a, some, some work to do, but um, knowing is half the battle. <laughs> Um, Councillor Devine. Yeah, hi. Thank you both for, for coming and for this uh, report. Um, I just wanted for the record to name the Downtown Parking Study Committee. Jordan Hart, of course, from the Chamber of Commerce. Carl Rossi, the director of the uh, DPW. Laura Wilson, the tax collector in Hoyoke. Mm -hmm. um, Kate Krockmeyer, the planning board. Captain Isaiah Cruz, the Hoyoke Police Department. Daphne Board, City of Hoyoke Redevelopment Authority, and DJ O'Connor, the owner of Mass Surgical, which is right across the street. Um, so this is terrific that you've done so much work on this. And I know now that we have two parking attendants, enforcement officers that actually have uniforms now where they hadn't before and they were getting a lot of abuse. So at least they're, they're noticeable. And I, I don't know if this happens or if there's a way to track it. Um, people that um, work here, are they feeding the meters so they don't have to use the garage? That was my, I, I don't think you can tell me that, but it's something that I'm thinking about. So currently we, em employees who choose to park, um, 
in the city, they have to go to DPW to get a monthly permit, which I believe is $40 a month. Um, and it's not a very modern system. Um, so you go and you can only buy three months at a time. So I know in cases, you know, some companies want to be able to put it all in like a budget light item and pay it all up front, but the DPW only allows for you to pay three months in advance. Mm -hmm. And then whomever pays um, at the desk mm -hmm. has to distribute the passes. I'm not sure if Holyoke Health Center has a unique situation given their magnitude of employees that they buy the passes for, but um, typically that's, that's the case. You have, and you have to indicate where it is you're parking. I always indicate the lot adjacent to La Isla, the former Fernandez, and oftentimes I park there, and that's where my permit is, and sometimes there's no places to park in that lot. Yeah. So um, I know that the parking enforcers, as long as they see that you have a permit, they're, they're not going to really tag you and give you a hard time. I don't even know if they have the capability of seeing like where you've indicated you want to park, um, but it is crucial to have the little plaque and it's it's very small so the one that Natalie showed in in the with the large blue one is certainly more noticeable than yeah. than what we're given and I imagine that also helps other people see that people in that lot have a permit and that they probably shouldn't be parking there if it's big enough you know and I had a question this weekend from somebody um, at the festival who asked me about the parking garage the Ernie Prue one that it said uh, employee parking only or something like that and I said I think if you go in there you're gonna find that it's not for just employees it's for the public as well so I just want to I knew that but I trying to explain it to her that when you first come in it may say employee parking only or something but it is for the public as you go up the okay thank you yeah I've always been thoroughly confused by the garage parking system yeah. in downtown, so I just don't use it because I don't understand it. <laughs> it's not easy to figure out, and I don't want to get towed. <laughs> um, thank you. Do we have any other questions, comments? No. All right. Uh, hi, friends. Oh, sorry. Can I? I can't see anything for some reason oh, on here. here. Yeah. Oh, here um, counselor, I mean, <laughs> President... Murphy Rambaletti. You're good. You're good. Thank you. Um, just really quickly, um, I wanted to echo some of the um, thoughts tonight. Um, and also, because I spend so much time downtown uh, parking in downtown Holyoke, and I am, and like, my employer pays for um, parking with the city. So thank you, Jordan, for highlighting. Um, some of the challenges uh, there with just like systems and modernizing things. I think it does point to the need for something like a, a, a parking authority. Um, but anyway, um, I also just wanted to advocate for um, residents who live downtown. I believe it was briefly mentioned, but I also used to live downtown on High Street. And when the thing that stuck out to me the most with this um, report was that um, people go over the time limit and there were so many times when I didn't really know, I, there wasn't really anywhere designated for me to park so I kind of just had to park in a metered spot and, and hope that I would get lucky or that I could remember to continuously pay for the, the parking. So I just, you know, I, I'm looking forward to updating some of these ordinances. Um, and just hope that we can figure out a way so that residents who do live downtown and who have limited options for um, short and long-term parking, you know, can can have some kind of a system in place um, to help them move forward. And um, just thank you to everyone that worked on this. I know it was a lot of work and I'm looking forward to continuing moving this forward, so thanks. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Councilor Sullivan? No, I'm fine right now. Okay. So, would I'll entertain a motion that this is complied with? Second. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks so much for coming in and presenting to us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Good job. So, before we adjourn, yep. oh. I'd like to make a motion to take up item number seven, the tabled item, for a very, sure thing. very brief discussion. Yeah, so if I might as well, 
Um, I'd prefer not to adjourn right away because there are certain things here that we may be able to uh, give leave to withdraw. So can I get a second on item seven? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item seven um, in the late on the table items. Um, introduced by Councilors Bartley and Sullivan, the Conservation Commissioner be invited to attend a future DGR meeting to provide an update on the construction in and around Scotts Tower. Uh, please be prepared to address the issue of water runoff to the pond owned by the abutter at 5 and 15 Linder Heights. Um, Councilor Sullivan? Yes, we, we, we had an uh, interesting discussion on this back in June, and the reason we tabled it was to see what the ongoing results were. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, having seen a lot of the recent communications, I'd like to see this thing brought up uh, again and the Conservation Commission and um, uh, any other parties uh, involved uh, invited back in for a, a continued discussion at this point. Okay. Do you, are you proposing that this be put on the September 30th agenda? Yes. Okay. Second. That's the motion, right? Pardon? That was a motion. Is that the motion? To put this I, on the September 30th I never, agenda? I make a motion to. Oh, continue I don't know. Continue until you know. the 30th right. of September. Yeah. All right, we'll do that then. Fine. Next. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor okay, Sullivan. Yep. Councillor Devine? If, if um, you'll indulge me, um, this, I look through all of these items, which of which there are many, and some of them are very old, but one thing I did notice is there's uh, several that go to the um, um, OPED mm. department. So I'm wondering if we could, I could make a motion to take item 18, 22, 23, 33, 36, and 44 as a package. Can you say it one more time? Oh, sure. 18, 22, 23, 33, 36, and 44. And I don't know if you want to do this at the September meeting, but no. have a meeting with just Aaron Vega. Okay. With all these things, and that way you'll be able to go each and every one of them instead of going this item there, this item there. No, that's a great idea, and I can reach out to um, um, Aaron about a date that works There's for him then. Yeah. Yeah, got it. So I would make a motion that we do those. Um, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six items. All right. I got that. And so I will get in touch with him. Thank you, Councilor Devine. Yeah. Were there was there another one yeah, you were interested in? A few, if okay, you don't mind. Um, item number eight mm -hmm. that was filed uh, September fifth, twenty twenty three. So it's almost a year old, and it was that from Councilor Jordan that the City Council explore with the Mayor a residential redevelopment plan for city owned vacant parcels. Uh, homes built then sold um, and it goes on further and my question was was this already sent to the mayor and if it wasn't it looks like it was tabled on February 27 2024 mm. so my suggestion would be to make a motion to send that particular item to the mayor and at some future date have him come in to answer any questions uh. unless you think there's something else we should do? I think we should put that on another agenda and, and invite the mayor in if we want to address this, or I can reach and that, out and see specifically. Yeah, I just didn't know but if he ever. Councilor Jordan hasn't brought it up, so. Yeah, but I didn't know if the mayor ever got it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The next one is an item, item number nine, filed nine five twenty three, from Councilor Jordan that the law department and mayor be invited to the city council. To discuss an update on the use of the receivership program, including current properties being targeted, and this is also uh, almost a year old. And I'm not sure if it was ever referred to the mayor or referred to the building department. So right. I think it should be to both. All right. And then at some future date, yep. we can have somebody come in. And then item number. Oh, good. Tess is still here. Item number mm -hmm. 10 was filed on 12-5-23 by Councillor Murphy Rambaletti in order to declare the parcel Hoyoke Assessor's Map 
212 block 00, parcel 001 on East Hampton Road, surplus property um, for sale for $270,000. And if we could take that off, it was tabled 12 18 23 and Councilor Murphy Rambaletti, um, my only question is it's still a viable thing and why wasn't it um, taken up? Councilor? So thank you, we did take this up. It was uh, discussed at a prior meeting um, and it was tabled to, uh, we had the conservation director come in um, and it was decided that there were too many questions, I believe around, um, there was a, was this for the, this oh, is what is that called? The, um, Department of Fish and Game. Department yeah, but of Fish and Game. I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting to talk about this. Let me dig into my brain. The, um, the, oh my God, what is that called? When you assess the property, uh, the appraisal. Thank Surplus you. Surplus property. Yeah, yeah appraisal. Um, an appraisal. Yeah, yeah, there was an appraisal that was done. Um, it's it, it's all in a it's all recorded. Um, but I believe that. Um, there were still questions that needed to be answered. I don't know if Count, Councillor Bartley's still there in the room, but um, he, is. I, he was there. We were all there for that that conversation. I think that was like my last DGR meeting as the chair. But um, as far as I know, it still needs to be discussed. So I would keep it in the jacket and I would check in with um, Yoni from conservation. And yeah, Jeffrey, if you have anything to add, if I recall correctly, there was another order that went along with this where there was actually a proposal for sale and there was disagreement over the sale price. And the other order that went with it, if I recall correctly, was defeated. Mm. Council so, Bartley? Yeah, I mean I wouldn't Sorry. I wouldn't take it out of committee yet because I don't I don't think it's like not gonna happen. Councilor Bartley's in the room, he, and he wanted to add something. Yeah, we we did take a vote, and we did defeat it. So this this uh, we, we recommended not not to be sold it for this to this entity and under these conditions. Um, and and so when we see it declared a surplus, as as we all know, we you, you need to have two-thirds of the full body to declare a surplus then you need a simple majority to convey it out and so we I thought we I, I mean I I'll leave it to Jeff to sort of help us out with that when he can do the research for tomorrow but we, we voted not to declare a surplus and that should have gone up to City Council and we were just taking final action then so that is where it, that's where it was left so you think it's it's shouldn't even yeah. be in the jacket so no no and i and going on memory is never a good thing yeah but so I, we can I, I know we yeah. i know we defeated that to declare a surplus for us for sure um yeah jeffrey i thank you dave i'm i didn't i wasn't really expecting to talk about this so i could have gone through my notes but i'm sorry i just wanted to clear up some of the jacket tessa well we're here we can counselor biz i mean um I mean, attorney we'll bissonette is on the line and wanted to add something oh my recollection was there was a discussion about why an RFP hadn't been issued uh, for this rather than just an agreement between the two government agencies. So I think purchasing had put out an RFP but didn't get a response. And that was what was passed. And I believe Councilor Bartley's correct. There was a, a, a decision not to approve. And then there was a decision to uh, reconsider and place on the table. Uh, and I think that was pending the RFP, but I, I don't have my notes with me on that. But that's my recollection. Thank you, Attorney Bissnett. All right. So we'll leave that there for now and figure out um, if it should be there or not. Okay. Do you mind if I keep going? No, not at all. Um, item number 11, it was filed on August 1st, 2023 by Councillor Bartley. 
that the Hoya Police Department and Mass DOT work to promote a pedestrian safety plan for the employees contracted to work at the soldier's home. Um, it was tabled 9-25-23, and it's um, almost a year old, and I just didn't know if we had received anything yet, and perhaps, um, I don't know if Councilor Bartley has. Councilor Bartley? Uh, well, so we, uh, yeah, Tessa had, had the, uh, the, the people from Mass DOT come in, we had a good meeting, and then we, we just didn't get a final verdict on that. So, and really, it, it was just something to, because as I say in the order, there's a lot of uh, cars parking in parking lot queue, so the thinking was that they're gonna have to get from parking lot queue across Route 202 to the job site. Now, yeah. I haven't really heard any complaints about it, so I'm of the opinion that, you know, maybe we could for the next September meeting, because they're gonna be up there for another two years. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we could, maybe for the next meeting, we could get some feedback. Maybe Jeff could reach out to Mass DLT, because we have all the contact names, and, and then the, uh, the project manager on site to see if, in fact, that they are desirous of this, and if they're not desirous of this, you know, why not? And maybe we could just either give it leave to withdraw or just say comply with or whatever. So I think it, we just have to get more information from the gentlemen and gentle ladies on the ground. Right. So, um, and not to, yeah, not to sound harsh, but a big project like that, don't they handle their own parking safety by default? Well, so, <clears throat> it, it, and, and that you would think so, yeah. but because I'm sure they do projects like this all the time, right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure everybody knows how to cross the street. But <laughs> the, the fact is that there's no, there's no, uh, sidewalk there's no, yeah, there's and there's no sidewalk. crosswalk anywhere there's there. No crosswalk yeah. in, in that vicinity where they would come from parking lot Q, mm -hmm. and there's no sidewalks on that side of the street. The sidewalks are only on the uh, soldiers' home side of the street. So, so that was the um, that was really the impetus of, of that. So maybe we could get even a, an email communication possibly from them that could clear this up because what were you going to say, um, Councillor Anderson Thank you, Chair. So I, I was recently up there, I'd say about a month ago, and we met with the contractors. And I, I want to say that they have a shuttle going back and forth. Oh, great. So I, 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 I want to say that I, I could have sworn there was just so much sound happening. So and, and, like and I, said they have a safety plan. Yes, and and that's that's all we that's all I want to know. Yeah, and so I I could have sworn he up. said there's a because that was one of the questions that were asked while we were on the ground, and, and he said no we have shuttles, and I'm like okay, so there was no concern and they park literally across the street at the HEC. Yeah, the parking lot famous parking yep. lot queue. Yep. <laughs> all right, that sounds good. Um, um, Jeffrey, is there any way to like? communicate with them and just confirm that they have their parking safety in order? Yeah, I, I know that I, I do have an email thread that included the <coughs> people who were involved with that. And, um, I, I do recall Councilor Bartley's request to them was to come back with a, a parking safety plan for their for their workers. All right. Um, even just a, I think even just a written communication that says, hey, we, we use a shuttle. I mean, I don't think we have to invite a group of people in to tell us how they cross the street. <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure they're all right, but it's a very busy street. Yeah, yeah it is. Especially in the morning when school's in. So absolutely. Yeah, I, I hope they do have a shuttle. That sounds like it'd be very helpful. Thank you, everybody. Um, Councilor Devine. Item number twenty. Uh, it was filed on 122.24 from Hoyoke Redevelopment Authority. Summary of activities from November of 2022 to October 2023. <laughs> I would think that was received. Yeah, I'm going to say that should be complied with by now. Item 20. So complied with and received. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? And then we go to, let's see, I'm getting there. Madam Chair? Um, yes, Councillor Bartley. Not, not to get super technical. Cause yeah, no, no. But you, you, if you're going to do that, you got to make a motion to remove it from the table. Oh. I mean, that, let's leave that be. But you should make a motion to remove it from the table and then make a motion to spend rules for final action and just okay. send it forward. Thank you. All potatoes. Thank you very much. Make a motion to take up item number 20. Second. Second. I mean. <laughs> make a motion that it be complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm 
just going through these so mm -hmm. these are so old. <laughs> a lot of quarters on here. I like them. Well, we could. All right. <laughs> Um, here's one, item 28, mm -hmm. uh, Bacon Bartley Puello, and it's a copy, so uh, I'm yes, not so sure take that where it went. Um, order that the City Council adopt a resolution seeking our state delegation to support the reinstatement of no electronic tolls from Westfield to West Springfield to create an incentive for tractor-trailer drivers to travel on the Mass Pike uh, instead of Homestead Avenue. So I make a motion to take that off the table. Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. And it, it was a copy, so I'm not sure where it went originally, but. Um, well, then we can make a motion for final action. Yep. Okay, so moved. And I would mark this as complied, complied with if it's with? just a copy. Well, since I'm here, yeah, it, it has been complied with. So. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, if we're going to. Yeah, I'd happily have a discussion about it if, if, if it makes sense, September 30th, and to, uh, I'd happily do it, and to talk about the, why, why we filed it and what it, what it could do. And I'd like to ultimately get a, a very brief resolution a pass, passed, and we could ship it to uh, Pat and John. All right, well, so you want to see I, that on the 30th? Yeah. But okay. I'm, I'm not, well, I, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll even draft up a draft resolution for, uh, for September 30th. Sounds great. Yeah, no problem. All right, so um, if and if we don't want to pass it, then don't pass it. So, so we'll make a motion to. So it was taken off the table for um for and then um we can motion to table it to September thirtieth. Thirtieth. Okay. Yep. okay. On table. Aye. 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 Okay. Madam Chair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Madam President. I didn't know if you could see my hand. I apologize. <laughs> I just have more of a clarifying question. If some things are being voted on tonight to take out of the, um, to take off the table, um, are those things aren't gonna be able to be on the agenda for tomorrow. I just wanna clarify, it, it won't be 48 hours, correct? Okay, right, right. Okay. Okay. That makes sense, yeah. thank you. I just, thank you. That's why you're the president. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, Good to know. In this case, it's just coming out to be on the next agenda, right. but that okay. is important information, thank you. Okay. Um, here's another one, item 32, mm -hmm. um, Bartley Puello, it's a copy, copy. Mm -hmm. ordered the Mayor and Community Development Department fund the following projects of CBG money or ARPA funds replace the asphalt, and, and he left, so I have no idea if they did this or not, so I suppose we'll, it's two years old, and uh, uh, I guess we'll table it again. Okay. So why don't we, um, why don't you let me address all the copies in here? Good. And I'll just deal yes. with those and so then we don't have to table them individually. Like a good idea. Okay. You want me to throw a few in, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Is there copies there? No. Of no, I'll find all the copies. Yeah. Other Did you have something, Councillor Sullivan, you wanted to add? Well, that's what I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. See, I, he just said don't give his leave to withdraw. So I was going to give item 32 leave to withdraw but since he left I don't know if that's been taken care of so I guess we'll have to table it. Well it sounds like anything we want to leave to withdraw has to come out and be on the agenda to get rid of it anyway so we can't just throw things away. I didn't Madam want Chief. to throw it away. Mm -hmm. um, leave to withdraw is different. Jeffrey? Yeah, yeah just to, uh, so I just went back and looked at the minutes from the order when the resolution came up. Mm -hmm. um, the resolution was actually adopted on August 1st 23 and then the copy was sent to the committee that was for um, item 28 the, uh, the the one about the the tolls yeah 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 the, the resolution was already adopted when it came up initially <laughs> August 1st of last year okay so. Uh, so can you tell me again what date that happened um, it was August 1st of 2023 August 1st 2023 was the resolution yeah, it was it was adopted that night and then copied to the committee. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's see. If there's no any more, if there's 
I'm sorry. I motion to adjourn if there's. Go ahead. I, go I ahead got, and leave these in the jacket then. Well, hang. I got a couple. I went through this whole thing today. Okay, calm down. Uh, I've got a couple. Okay, <laughs> Councilor Sullivan. I mean, there's 44 items here. It's all right. So Councilor Sullivan. I, item 29. Mm -hmm. Item 29 and item 33 are just letters, communications. Okay. And so, what would you have us do with them? I'd throw them in a recycle bin. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, so we can take those out and put them in with the copies to act on at the next meeting. So 29 and 33, you said? Yeah, I mean, one's just a letter uh, uh, from uh, Katie Talbot. Uh, over, September 30th will be a over cleanup a meeting. Ago, uh, <laughs> the other one's a communication from Aaron Vega okay. uh, from two years ago. Uh, item 43 mm -hmm. is a, a, another a letter from Anthony Soto just uh, informing us of a transfer that happened three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know what we do with just communications that are just sitting there in the jacket. Uh, I think we can treat them like the copies and I will put them on the agenda and we can just um, receive them. All right. Item 44, I would give leave to withdraw. That's mine from three years ago. Okay. Uh, we have a second on that? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I would say the same for uh, items 45 and uh, 46 also, that they just be given leave to withdraw. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. And, and I did have one, um, and I'm just trying to find it. It was from uh, Jose Maldonado Velez mm -hmm. to have the person from the Red Cross come in. That. I thought I hit that one. Because I, I just want to tell yeah, you that. That's yeah. Do we have a number on that one? Uh. Oh, I've got it. number thirty-seven and thirty-eight. Both be given leave to withdraw. Also, okay. thirty-seven is that the. Um, Red yeah, Cross? that's the Red Cross, yeah. Okay, she's retired. And he's in Russia. Yeah. yeah. Did I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the same with uh, 38. I would make a motion to give that leave to withdraw also. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. And do we do item 41? Invite the D. This was from 3122. It's over two years old. Um, from Councilor Rivera. Uh, we can ask him what he wants to do about that. I think we've already got our new system in place. Yeah, I, also, I, I so. agree, so, but, okay. whatever. That's it for me. All right. I'll in entertain the ultimate motion. Enjoy. Anybody? <laughs> I'm waiting for Juan to make the motion. <laughs> Motion. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for cleaning out the jacket a bit. Thank you.